Hi, in this lesson, we'll compare how cryptography has worked in the past, how it works right now, and how it might grow in the future. We learned about the Caesar cipher earlier in the lesson. This is a historical substitution cipher where each letter is shifted by a key value. As you might have guessed already, this isn't a really strong cipher. There are only 26 possible keys. A computer could do this in milliseconds, and really a human could break this very easily as well. By using what is called brute force, or trial and error, there's only 26 possible keys to try. Instead of trying all 26 keys, we could look at the letter frequency as well. Certain letters of the English alphabet are more common than others, like the letter E. If you took the letter frequency analysis of a Caesar cipher text, chances are that the letter that shows up the most would most likely be the letter E in plain text. So you can just figure out the key or the shift by looking at that one letter. This is where Visionaire, a 16th century cryptographer, took the Caesar cipher up a notch. He used the cipher, but he decided to use a different shift for each letter. The Visionaire cipher consists of several Caesar ciphers in sequence with different shift values based on a keyword. Let's take a look. Let's use a keyword of dog. Now the letter A would be a shift of zero, B is a shift of one, C is a shift of two. So this makes D a shift of three. The same process gives us a shift of 14 for O and a shift of six for G. The first letter of the plain text would be encrypted using a shift of three. The second letter would be encrypted using a shift of 14. And the third letter would be encrypted using a shift of six. Then it would just start over and continue this pattern of three, 14, six for the entire message. Let's look at an example. The first letter is shifted three times to the letter D. The second letter is then shifted 14 times to the letter H. The next letter is shifted six times to the letter Z. And here you may notice that the plain text letter T is encrypted to two different letters using this method. Well, that will definitely help hide the message. We continue this pattern of three, 14, six until we get the full ciphertext. Because the shift changes each time, you now can't break the cipher using brute force. The shift is based on a keyword, and that keyword can be any length, so there are infinite possibilities. Letter frequency also won't work because the same letter could be shifted in more than one way. Since common letters are encrypted as different ciphertext letters at different points, finding the most common ciphertext wouldn't work in this case. Cryptography has obviously evolved since the time of Caesar and Visionaire. Caesar only had a choice of 26 different keys. Cryptography today measures keys in bits. A bit is like a place value. Each bit or place value can be a zero or a one. For example, if you use a 10 bit key, then your key could be 10 zeros, it could be 10 ones, or it could be any combination of zeros and ones. The number of different possibilities can be represented by two to the n power. So for a 10 bit key, this is two to the 10th power or 1,024 different possible keys. Well, that's much better than 26. In today's encryption, it's common for a key length to use 128 or 256 bits. So how many possibilities do you suppose a 256 bit key has? Well, this many possible combinations, and I'm not gonna try to read that out. It's a lot of commas. There are also stronger encryption algorithms that use a key length up to 4,000 bits. So you can imagine how much bigger this number would be for those keys. While this may seem safe for now, computing power continues to get better and faster. So we do need to continue thinking of ways to keep our data safe on the internet. Cryptologists are already starting to work with encryption techniques that use quantum computing. Instead of using mathematical algorithms, a quantum computer encodes information in particles like photons and electrons. Quantum mechanics allows particles to be more than just on or off, or one or zero. These particles can exist in a superposition of these two states, so like half on or half off. As you can imagine, this would provide a much larger number of possible combinations. All right, now it's your turn to explore. Have fun!